Hello Africa and welcome to AU Talks. Today I'm honored to be interviewing a great personality in the University of Rwanda, the Deputy Vice Chancellor, Institutional Advancement of the University of Rwanda, in the name of Ambassador Dr. Charles Burugandi. We'll be talking about university advancement in Africa, a case study in the University of Rwanda. But before we begin the discussion, we'll go for a quick pause. Stay tuned, we'll be right back. The kind of university we ultimately want is a university that allows people to become the best kind of people they were ever meant to be. You know? And again, it comes back to a university being a space, a, a space of three or four years in the space of a young person's life, where they're protected from many of the other pressures of needing to seek employment and, and, and start their careers, but a space in which we provide them with opportunities to become the best. Hello there, welcome. If you just joined us, it's AU Talks on AU TV. We're discussing university advancements, a case study in the University of Rwanda. And I have with me here a great personality in the University of Rwanda. He is the Deputy Vice Chancellor, Institutional Advancement in the University of Rwanda in the name of Ambassador Dr. Charles Burugandi. Welcome, sir. Welcome. Great. Thank you for coming. I'm honored, highly honored to be in your presence, yeah. Um, I have this concept that I want to share with you to so help us throw more light on it. The plant concept, you know, every seed grows from the soil and it germinates and grows upwards. Can you share with us where the University of Rwanda has come from in the past and where it is heading to now? The University of Rwanda is... Um a fairly new university in the sense that it was created in 2013 okay. out of the measure of seven uh, public higher learning institutions. Um, then actually two years afterwards, five more public higher learning institutions were added to the seven, okay. and then a, a, year a, a year after, in 2016, two additional uh, subsidized uh, private universities or higher learning institutions were also added. Okay. Currently, the University of Rwanda is a measure of 14 uh, different higher learning institutions. Okay. Um, the purpose of merging all public higher learning institutions was to create a synergy mm -hmm. uh, because all these institutions were receiving uh, funding from the government. Sure. And in doing a deep analysis of what they were doing, uh, it was realized that there were a lot of duplications of programs yeah. and not all these duplicated programs were of same quality okay. and the uh, government of Rwanda did not want to continue to sponsor mm -hmm. uh, programs that, are, that were of different quality because it was felt like an unfairness to some of these students who were graduating from institutions that were not equally uh, respected okay. and appreciated on the market. Sure. So we wanted to bring together some cohesiveness, some harmony mm -hmm. in the programs that were being offered sure. by these public higher learning institutions. Another reason that presided over the merging of the public higher learning institutions was that having these 14 uh, public higher learning institutions mm -hmm. was creating a situation whereby 
most of these duplicated programs mm -hmm. had minimum human capacity. Okay. Uh, and therefore, most of these institutions were primarily concerned with teaching. There, were, there was very little research mm -hmm. being done in most of these universities, except maybe one or two because they lacked the minimum critical mass of, of trained people mm -hmm. to be able to undertake research. So we wanted to bring the few PhDs that were teaching, let's say, in civil engineering in Mutara Polytechnic, and uh, those who were teaching uh, civil engineering in Chigari Institute of Science and Technology and those who are doing the same in National University of Rwanda sure. and creating one department of civil engineering okay. whereby the three PhDs who were in Mutara Polytechnic, three, two or four in NUR would come together mm -hmm. Uh, that's creating a, a department of civil engineering with eight, seven, or ten uh, PhD in civil engineering, okay. uh, which creates a minimum capacity to carry out research. Right. Um, so the university, as I said, is only five and a half years old. Okay. Uh, we have seen a lot of achievement mm -hmm. uh, in line with the mission we wanted to uh, to accomplish. Uh, first of all, we proceeded with a complete harmonization of all the programs, yes. creating one program uh, for, let's say, civil engineering, one program for physics, for mathematics, for and so on and so forth. Uh, secondly, uh, if you look at the research output of the university, mm -hmm. it has almost quadrupled the research output of the former 14 uh, public institutions that were merged into into you are. Okay. And because of that critical mass of researchers coming together, mm -hmm. they, they have also been able to attract uh, more research grants. For example, uh, the University of Rwanda is hosting uh, four African centers of excellence, okay. which were won competitively uh, and we are the only university on the continent that managed to win four African centers of excellence. Uh, we have an African center of excellence in energy for sustainable development. We have an African center of excellence in Internet of Things. Okay. We have an African center of excellence in data science. Okay. And we have an African center of excellence in innovative teaching and learning of mathematics and science. These are mainly in science and uh, technology uh, centers. We, we also host, uh, uh, and these, the, these four are funded by the World yeah. Bank. We also have uh, an African center, I mean, a regional center of excellence in biomedical engineering and e-health. Mm -hmm funded by the African Development Bank, sure. a, a regional center of excellence in vaccine immunization and health supply chain management funded by KFW. We also managed to attract uh, an African center of uh, or the Institute, Institute for Fundamental Research, which is linked with uh, uh, the ICTP, the International Center for Theoretical Physics. Okay in Trieste, which is a UNESCO Category 2 center. And we have also another center in, of excellence in biodiversity and natural resource uh, management. 
uh, supported by UNESCO. So already mm -hmm. uh, we are seeing the fruits of the measure, the measure. Of, of, of these former 14 institutes uh, of higher learning, uh, higher learning institutions. That's great. Um, counting from your role as University Advancement Deputy Vice Chancellor, um, we have other same, similar roles in many universities in Africa. But well, what do you do unique as the Deputy Vice Chancellor University Advancement in the University of Rwanda? Uh, first and foremost, I want to say that this is a new role altogether in, in the University okay. of Rwanda. Uh, I've been in this position for two years and a half. Mm -hmm. And actually, this university is the first university in Rwanda to have a, a deputy vice chancellor or a vice rector in charge of uh, uh, university advancement, advancement, institution advancement. And actually, even throughout Africa, mm -hmm. thi this is a new role. Sure. It is a new role that uh, came into being by observing what uh, universities in North America do. Okay. Uh, that is where really that role was born. Okay. Uh, uh, it is mainly a role that is consecrated to mobilizing resources okay. for implementing the university strategic plans. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe the African universities were let into creating such a role because the uh, universities in Africa were mainly government sponsored universities yes and the government was uh, paying the salaries of uh, the administrative and academic staff where governments were equipping the universities labs and everything sure but as development priorities uh, diversified, mm -hmm. many, many government became unable to satisfy all the needs of, uh, mm -hmm. of yes, universities yes. and have been pushing even their public universities to start Consumers. mobilizing resources. Sure. One avenue of um, resource uh, that North American universities have exploited mm -hmm. uh, excellently mm -hmm. is their alumni. Okay. Uh, if you visit most of these North American universities, you will find uh, uh, buildings named after alumni. some of their yes. illustrious uh, alumni. Uh, so what we've been trying to do is to create an alumni association. Mm -hmm. uh, although this university, as you said, is five years old, but it is a measure of universities and institutions that existed uh, longer before, like the oldest university in Rwanda was created in 1963. Okay. So, we have a, a, a good alumni base sure. that, if mobilized, can contribute to the development of our university. Yeah. And that's what we've been trying to do, create a well-functioning alumni mm -hmm. uh, association. Uh, and in the first instance, we want them to to feel linked, to sure. create a bond mm -hmm. between our alumni and the university. Okay. And in the second instance, we shall be encouraging them to start contributing to the mission, vision, and objectives of our university. 
maybe we are not going to go frontally asking them money, mm -hmm. but asking them to be involved in in programs such as career uh, counseling, mm -hmm. uh, giving uh, lectures in our universities, even uh, teaching some models. Yeah. Uh, and slowly we will even start mobilizing them to give money to the university. Uh, of course, that is one source of possible Possibly. resources. Uh, we are also looking at uh, development partners of our, of, of our country mm -hmm. uh, to mobilize them to support our university. Okay. And we have been a bit successful with some of them. We are getting a lot of resources from Sweden. Mm -hmm. uh, we are getting also support from Belgium, Germany, Netherlands, a bit from America. So we are also investigating the possibility of getting uh, support from foundations that are supporting higher education in other parts of the world. Mm -hmm. um, basically, that is what we do in terms of uh, mobilizing resources. But this portfolio of mine mm -hmm. is also in charge of uh, public relations, sure. communication. Maybe naturally, because if you want to go out and ask support, sure. you need to be known. Yes. So that's why probably naturally the public relations office is also placed under, under my portfolio. Uh, we do our best to, to feature on our televisions, on our radio, in our newspaper. Um, and of course, beyond the border, we use, we use our website. Mm -hmm. uh, we try to maintain a library website so that people can visit us virtually uh, through our, our website. The other Part of my portfolio is student experience. Okay. We reasoned that an alumni will likely be involved mm -hmm. in the life of his or her university, yeah. depending on the experience he or she will have lived during her, his or her time on sure. the campus. Sure. So that's why it was decided that the student experience uh, is brought into my to portfolio. portfolio. So I am involved with uh, issues of uh, students' welfare, uh, covering uh, their accommodation, sports, cultural activities. I'm also involved in career ca counseling. Okay. We have a department called Career and Employability Services. Okay. And I work closely with uh, uh, the registrar's office to ensure that mm -hmm. when students are registering, they enjoy the experience. Uh, all this together to ensure that when they leave the university and cross the, 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 the border to become alumni, sure. they will continue to think about the university because of the experience they, they will have had during their life here. That sounds amazing as, as part of your, your portfolio. Um, if you were to consider any other means mm -hmm. of trying to market the University of Rwanda, as part of what you do, mm -hmm. apart from taking you aside, mm -hmm. what other mechanisms is being put in place to market University of Rwanda outside your scope? 
Uh, that is uh, that is not easy. Uh, we we are trying to use social media mm -hmm. a lot. Yeah. Because the social media reaches everywhere. Everywhere. Uh, I've mentioned the website. Uh, basically to reach out uh, beyond Rwandan borders. Mm -hmm. These are the two uh, avenues we use, but actually it is one avenue. Even website is social media <laughs> now. Sure. Uh, so that is the best way of reaching mm -hmm. out. Uh, we are challenged to make sure that we have uh, enticing content yeah. uh, on our Twitter, handle, Facebook, Instagram, and so on and so forth. Um, the other thing we do, we, uh, by the way, I forgot to mention that under my portfolio yes. lies also partnerships. Sure or relationship with other universities are under my portfolio. Sure. What we try to, to achieve is that whenever we, we have an active collaboration with any university, mm -hmm. uh, if we sign an MOU on cooperation, not only we report this on our website, but we ask the partnering institution to also put it on their website. their website so that uh, someone visiting, uh, let's say MIT, uh, will be able to see a link to the University of Rwanda, uh, uh, thus making our university known uh, outside. So we want to thank you for taking time to come and uh, uh, do this uh, coverage of the University of Rwanda. We do believe that uh, the documentaries you are going to produce out sure. of this, the interviews you will be airing are going to substantially contribute to making our university known outside uh, Rwanda. I would also add that these, these centers of excellence that mm -hmm. I mentioned yes are greatly contributing to make our university known because if you look at the student we have been able to attract, sure. we have attracted students uh, from East and Southern Africa, but also from even West Africa. We have students from Nigeria, Liberia, Ghana. So it's, it's these, these centers of excellence are, are a good tool to market our university. Great. Hello there. You just joined us, AU Talks, and we're talking about university advancement, a case study on the University of Rwanda. And I have with me Ambassador Dr. Charles Murugandi. Don't go anywhere. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. Oh, you know, this is a very uh, important university for the people of Rwanda. The government and the people of Rwanda expect a lot from this university. Uh, it is a university that is called to be a, the benchmark of quality of teaching, the benchmark of uh, research to address developmental challenges of, the, of, of our country. As we teach, it's part of kind of uh, materials that we are putting in, uh, like production materials. So we need to have a, an output who is the student, who is going now to be useful to the nation and in different aspects. As you can see, the country has shifted from poverty reduction towards the national transformation. That implies the need of additional skills that needs to be bridged by the students that we are producing currently. At the University of Rwanda, the quality and standard of teaching is very solid and cannot be compromised. I joined the university with a lot of impression and expectations and until now, my hopes have not been dashed. The quality of education in the, in the University of Rwanda is 
I think one of the highest standards. It's like they prepare the students to be entrepreneurs in the country and at the same time should they reach a situation to go outside let's say to the US or Europe they can also survive there. It, the quality of education is very very high. It's actually I would say it will prepare you for any job, any situation you want that you can be thrown at. During this small experience that I've passed here, I've learned that uh, being in, in a university does not, it's not just about academics. Uh, they've taught me a lot of different things, how to ad adapt with the social and civic rights, how to be responsible and to find the enemy. For me, I want to see the university in the next 10 years where there is a very strong linkage between the university community, students, university lecturers, researchers, and also citizens or community because we owe them a lot of responsibilities in terms of knowledge, in terms of technology, in terms of innovations to handle different difficulties that they are meeting in their day-to-day -day business and activities. Hello, welcome back. And if you just joined us, it is AU Talks, and we are discussing university advancements, a case study on the University of Rwanda. And I'm still discussing this with the Deputy Vice Chancellor, Institutional Advancements, University of Rwanda. Um, Doc, we want to go into IGFs, I mean, internally generated funds for your university, from your position as uh, University Advancement uh, Deputy Vice Chancellor. How are the sources for your IGFs? Yeah, um, this university receives uh, funding from the government, which is mainly through the number of students that the government sponsors uh, by paying their tuition. Okay. That is our measure uh, income. Okay. But that income is unable to cover all our, our needs. Okay. So we are encouraged to generate uh, revenue sure. internally. The biggest internally generated revenue is through admitting privately, stu uh, privately sponsored students. Okay. That is the biggest portion. Okay. The second portion of uh, IGF is uh, through a research grant. Okay. Uh, our lecturers are encouraged mm -hmm. to write grant proposals, okay. submit them to various uh, organizations mm -hmm. that fund research and they usually bring in money to okay. the university and out of the money they bring there is what we call overheads that comes to the university to pay for services they receive from the university such as electricity, office, water, internet. Um, the second or the third avenue of uh, internally generated revenue is through short courses. Okay. Uh, short courses in, uh, let's say, uh, you have a number of uh, procurement officers who need refresher course in procurement. Okay. Uh, staff in insurance that need refresher courses and so on and so forth. Okay. Um, we also generate revenue through consultancies. Okay. Uh, the University of Rwanda, maybe I forgot to mention this when I was introducing the University of Rwanda, is the largest and the most comprehensive university you have in Rwanda. Okay. 
we, we, we cover almost areas, all areas of, uh, of academic endeavor. Yeah. Huh? Um, we have six colleges, the College of Business and Economics, sure. the College of um, Medicine mm -hmm. and Health Sciences, mm -hmm. College of Agriculture, sure. uh, Animal Science and Veterinary Medicine, have the College of Science and Technology. Mm -hmm. We have the College of Arts and Social Sciences and the College of Education. You, even their naming suggests that we are covering almost um, everywhere. Uh, every endeavor, uh, academic endeavor. And we, we have probably the highest concentration of uh, PhD holders, master's holders. Okay. And we've been encouraging our lecturers to be involved in uh, consult consulting. Consultations. Yeah. The, we have the government is always contracting consultants. Okay. Some international organizations such as WHO, uh, UNICEF, mm -hmm. uh, USAID, DFID, sure. they all hire consultants. Uh, and we, we believe we have uh, better capacity than any other small consultants uh, companies that, that exist in the country. Sure. So maybe our challenge is, is how to organize our lecturers so that they present a, a winning bid. Mm -hmm. uh, so how do we bring together uh, lecturers in the College of Business and Economics yes. and the College of Agriculture and Veterinary Medicine yes. and the College of Engineering to present a, a good proposal yeah. when, let's say, our, our agency for electricity and water needs a consultancy uh, that need to bring together people with different expertise. Sure. So we've established uh, an office for consultancy uh, that plays that role. Okay. Uh, it spends it time scanning for calls for consultancy and, I mean, tenders uh, for consultancy, and then uh, identify people who can come together and write uh, a bid, I mean, submit a bid. Um, it is an exercise uh, that is not yet perfect, okay. but that is extremely promising because uh, in any given year, I believe our government uh, contract uh, in millions of dollars sure. for cons consultancies. These international organizations also do the same. Mm -hmm. It is uh, a place where we can really generate a lot More of money. Uh, uh, the challenge is uh, achieving a smooth organization uh, to be able to take advantage of this opportunity. Okay, how about the level of research? Is the research churned out of the University of Rwanda that were decorated? Or what aspects do you specialize more in? Social research, technology, mm -hmm. science? Um, currently, we are doing very well mm -hmm. in health sector. Okay. Our College of Medicine and Health Sciences is the highest producer of, of research okay. output. And the good thing is that they are putting out very good uh, impactful research okay. uh, and because of their quality of research 
Uh, a study was conducted by Web of Science recently and showed that the University of Rwanda is, has the second highest impact in terms of publication. Okay. Uh, although the number of publications we put out is still very low, mm -hmm. but those we put out are very impactful. And the Ministry of Health, for example, mm -hmm. uses many of our research uh, publication to inform policy making. Uh, we have not yet, probably it is because of the nature of the research we are doing, mm -hmm. we have not yet translated any of our research into product that are being sold on, on, on the market, uh, uh, except in some cases, some of the research done by uh, the College of Agriculture mm -hmm. and uh, Animal Sciences and Veterinary Medicine. Okay. Mm, some some of their research is translated into tools that, uh, that are used by some of our farmers. Okay. Um, having noted that our university's research output mm -hmm. is mainly staying at the level of good publication not translated into innovation. Sure. We recently created a center for innovation and entrepreneurship, mm -hmm. which is charged with the responsibility of, uh, of looking at the publications that are coming out of the University of Rwanda yeah. and accompanying some of the most promising publications on the journey to translate them into innovation, okay. into goods, prototypes yeah. that can be eventually sold. Sure. And that center has also the responsibility of linking the university with industry so that if a if a research leads to an innovation mm -hmm. and we have a so prototype, mm -hmm. then because we don't have probably the money to invest in uh, the commercialization of this prototype, mm -hmm. we look at an industry which would be interested in commercializing this prototype, okay. and then we Department. form a joint venture to do that. Okay. But I would say that so far, I don't have any uh, success to share with you. Okay. It is still in the process. Uh, in the process. Okay, then um, do you want to share with us the strategic focus of the Institutional Advancement um, Office to mm -hmm. the University of Rwanda and to the African continent as a whole? The strategic focus is, uh, first of all, y you know, as I defined the uh, uh, the office, yeah. the main and the primary objective of the office is, is to generate resources uh, for the university to be able to implement its strategic uh, plan uh, developed in order to achieve its vision, mission, and objectives. Yes. So, the strategic uh, focus is how do we generate resources. Yes. As I said, one promising area is organizing our alumni okay. base, uh, hooking it to their alma mater, uh, creating that bond, and mobilizing them not only to contribute to the university as individuals, 
but also as people who are occupying influential position in, in the society. If you go to the parliament, mm -hmm. maybe half of the, the MPs are graduates of our university. If you go into the government, maybe half of the ministers or, I mean, a big percentage of the ministers, a big percentage of uh, uh, permanent secretaries, uh, DGs, are graduates of our universities. Yeah. Our university. If you go into the private sector, uh, all leading companies have in their top management graduates of, their, uh, of our university. If we manage to bring these people back to their alma mater and to feel that it, whatever they've been able to achieve, this university contributed to their success. Yes. And somehow they need to give back to the university. If we achieve that, then we can go and rest. The rest would be managing the flow of income that would come from them. Yes. The second strategic focus is mobilizing the entire community, eh, university community, to understand that they are all staff of university advancement. Yes. In the sense that every time you offer good service, sure. let's say you are a gatekeeper, mm -hmm. if you receive everyone who comes to the university, you are contributing to the university yeah, advancement. Right. If you are a good professor, every time you go out and talk about your research uh, with excitement, mm -hmm. you are attracting people to the university. Mm -hmm. And then you can, we can also help these good professors, these professors who are very productive in research, and even those who are not, we can help them to become productive in research, and encourage them to write proposals, mm -hmm. uh, grant proposals, uh, to attract research money in our university. Sure. That in that way, they would be contributing to the advancement. Of course, if we mobilize also the student to feel proud of this university, and whenever they go out, they talk to their parents, and, and they, they are so proud of being students at, at our university, they would be creating a pro University of Rwanda constituents sure. wherever they are. And that would ensure that we get resources to continue on uh, to achieve our mission. Okay. Let's talk about collaboration, inter-university collaboration mm -hmm. and intra, looking at um, mm -hmm. beyond your borders mm -hmm. to other African universities. How well can you count your level of collaboration with universities in Rwanda, counting from the fact that there's been a measure of so many universities together being University of Rwanda, making you enormously formidable against other universities which are not part of this measure. Mm -hmm. How does that work with collaboration and across your borders? Maybe let me start with collaboration inside our university. Okay. Um, we have recently developed a an approach to research mm -hmm. that is interdisciplinarity. Okay. We defined 10 uh, clusters uh, that are priority research clusters, mm -hmm. clusters for our university. Sure. And for each cluster, we need interdisciplinarity within the cluster mm -hmm. and then 
interdisciplinarity uh, among the clusters. Okay. Uh, with this, we want to, to encourage collaboration between schools, uh, collaboration between department, mm -hmm. and collaboration between colleges. Okay. Uh, and uh, in vying for funding from one of the big uh, donor partner, sure. we developed a concept note along these ideas, okay. and the concept note was accepted. And on that basis, letters of intent were, were called, submitted proposals. Mm -hmm. uh, some of them were selected for full proposals. And then we are uh, in the process of finalization and agreement that will bring in this university close to 35 million US dollars okay. in research. Um, the good thing is that the research that is going to be funded through this donor mm -hmm. is going to allow us to collaborate with more than 13 universities in the donor's country, okay. uh, which help us build partnership with universities in the north. Okay. And that is an approach we are applying to many other partners. So we have a lot of uh, partnership with many universities. But I would also state that uh, in most cases, universities are eager to collaborate among themselves. But the problem is who funds that collaboration. Mm. Many universities are not willing to use their own resources to fund collaboration with other universities. But that is not something that should discourage us. From uh, once there is commitment to collaboration, then you can jointly develop research proposals, submit these research proposals to funders and usually you get get uh, resources when you have involvement of, of many universities with universities inside Rwanda we have been signing MOUs mm -hmm. uh, for collaboration and the collaboration here is not about really getting uh, resources from uh, any of these universities mm -hmm. into our university, or them getting resources uh, into their university, mm -hmm. is about sharing what we have. Okay. Uh, for example, our university has the highest number of PhD holders. And instead of allowing a situation where our lecturers uh, go to teach in these universities without notifying us of their going there, mm -hmm. we want a situation where these universities would tell us that they are in need of a professor of a lecturer in microbiology because they don't have. Sure. And then we identify a professor in microbiology. We look at his uh, background, uh, his um, load, sure. and see if we can allow him to go and teach. A, a 30 hour microbiology course at University X. Okay. Uh, and because 
that professor will be using our time mm -hmm. because the professor is first and foremost 100% full time here. Yeah. We can agree with this professor in, uh, in that university that maybe 15% of the salary he or she is going to get is going to come as a university income because we look at this teaching as consultancy made at university X. Okay. Uh, some universities do not have enough laboratories mm -hmm. and we don't even have also enough laboratories ourselves but it may happen that a university X has a better lab in biochemistry, mm -hmm. for example, than we have. Mm -hmm. And we can agree on what conditions course, our, our researchers or even our students can use their, okay. their lab. Maybe they allow us access to the lab on condition that we pay for reagents okay. and vice versa. Those are the kind of uh, collaboration we are discussing with, with other universities locally. That's amazing. So to, to, to just put it on the final note, mm -hmm. if the world or Africa as a whole was to expect from the University of Rwanda, what is your position in the minds of every consumer or every um, African or student in Rwanda? How should we position the University of Rwanda in terms of university advancement in what you turn out as graduates? Uh, unfortunately, I don't know how to read the mind of people. You, 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 that, is a, that is a very difficult science. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe I can tell you what I would want them to think about you. Think about, uh, the University of Rwanda, okay. whether it is what they are thinking of exactly. the University of Rwanda, exactly. that I don't know. But I would want, for example, the people of Rwanda, when they, they are thinking of a place to send their children to study at the university, to think first and foremost about the University of Rwanda. Okay. Every student graduating from higher uh, high school, we would want them to first investigate the possibility of studying at the University of Rwanda. Mm -hmm. And actually that is usually what is happening. Every Rwandan would want first and foremost to be admitted in the University of Rwanda. They, they usually go into other universities when they have failed to get a place in our university. Uh, but we don't want to take this for granted. Sure. We want to continue to work to deserve that place of choice for every Rwandan aspiring to study, and even every Rwandan who has the competence to teach at university, we would want them to feel that the University of Rwanda is an employer of choice. Sure. Uh, that is really what we, we would want to achieve. And how do we achieve that? By, by being a place where they get excellent teaching and excellent learning. And for staff aspiring to undertake an academic career, we want to create a research environment that is really very enticing uh, so that people would want to come and pursue an academic career here. Okay. And of course, that is not all what would one would want. Uh, the teaching and the learning, 
might be very good. The, 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 the research environment might be very good. But even the working, the living in the University of Rwanda, the relationship between uh, colleagues sure. should be also excellent. Sure. And that is the role of administration. We want to develop administrative leaders, academic leaders that are capable of creating an excellent working environment for those who are there and those who aspire to come. That's amazing. So that is where time will permit us on AU Talks. I was your host, Admiral Chodako, and I was with Ambassador Dr. Charles Oregandi discussing university advancement in Africa, a case study on the University of Rwanda. I believe it was amazing and you enjoyed it. Catch me next time on another episode of AU Talks as we talk more. Take care. Bye.